The major news of the last couple days has been the arrest of about a dozen men related to the attempted kidnapping and possible murder of Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer. That's right, the FBI, using various investigation techniques, including spying through uh, social media communication devices like uh, Telegram, which is very, very common among white supremacists, to uncover a plot to kidnap a head of state, or in, in this case, the uh, Michigan. And then essentially hold, it's not really, really clear what they were planning to do, hold her for a ransom, kidnap her, whatever, but many expressed a, a desire to actually kill her. And along while this was happening, the FBI also did notice a great deal of violent rhetoric being thrown toward her. Now, it wasn't going to stop here. They had actually seen plans to overthrow many state governments, and the, the, the suspects, the, the right-wing militias who were planning to carry these out, believed that the states were violating the U.S. Constitution. Although whether or not that's actually true remains to be seen. The right-wing interpretation of the Constitution tends to be uh, really very weak. Now, six people were charged federally with conspiracy to kidnapping, and seven other people associated with the militia group called the Wolverine Watchmen, and they were charged by the state and the Michigan Attorney General uh, Dana Nessel announced this. The people implicated in the plot are Adam Fox, Ty Garbin, Caleb Franks, Daniel Harris, Brandon Caserta. The Wolverine Watchmen is the name of the group, and I, I swear they, they just took that from Red Dawn. You know that right-wing power fantasy where... The Soviet Union and Cuba invade the U.S. and like this militia group of like five teenagers somehow manages to defeat the Soviet and Cuban soldiers. I mean, it's it, it's a right wing fantasy dream, and I I would bet my bottom dollar that's where they got the name Wolverine Watchmen from. I, I think, uh, given the very delusional nature of many of these individuals, I really would not put it past them to do so. Now, the FBI first became aware of the scheme when it was first reported to the Detroit News in 2020 through a social media group of individuals that were talking about these kinds of things through an original criminal complaint. Now, the court documents say the FBI planted a confidential informant inside these groups who uh, met up with them and said they wanted to uh, help them carry out these tasks. Uh, they traveled, to, the informant traveled to Dublin, Ohio on June 16 for a meeting with the Cro Croft Box and about 13 others. Now, this is what the police specifically said. The individuals in state custody are suspected to have attempted to identify the home addresses of law enforcement officers in order to target them, made threats of violence intended to instigate civil war, and engaged in planning and training for an operation to attack the Capitol building of Michigan and to kidnap government officials, including the governor of Michigan. Now, it should be noted that the governor has rightly linked much of this animosity, this uh, craziness, much of this uh, right-wing white supremacist militia activism to Donald Trump. Just last week, the President of the United States stood before the American people and refused to condemn white supremacists and hate groups like these two Michigan militia groups. Stand back and stand by, he told them. Stand back and stand by. Hate groups heard the president's words not as a rebuke, but as a rallying cry, as a call to action. When our leaders speak, their words matter. They carry weight. When our leaders meet with, encourage, or fraternize with domestic terrorists, they legitimize their actions. So this plot was uncovered uh, fairly easily by the FBI to overthrow various states within the Union. Now, it should be interesting to note that they had also planned to kill cops. They had, they were deliberately creating Molotov cocktails to throw at police officers, etc. Now, it's very interesting to listen to the right wing say that it's only Antifa that are being violent towards the police and that Antifa this, Antifa that, the enemy of the police, when... What are we seeing right here? Exactly, you know, when has Antifa ever killed anybody in the U.S.? 
But here we see a very specific plot to abduct a woman, possibly torture and murder her. Very likely murder if she was to be counted as having violated the Constitution, as well as uh, several other governments within within the Union. But, I mean, where where is the right wing to denounce this? Nowhere. But if Antifa damages some property, well, that's, well, in many of their eyes, literally genocide, because, you know, in, in the right wing view, property tends to be more important than human life. And I, I think that's something that's been adequately demonstrated for many, many decades. But it's also very interesting to, to look at this and see the cops who have openly allied with right-wing militias, very much racist militias uh, specifically. And, uh, you know, here's one of them plotting to kill you. When you go out and you deliberately ally with evil, not even like some kind of tactical thing, not even some kind of thing that you can pass off as, you know, some kind of temporary something or other, but something that by heart and soul is very much a part of you and the ideology that you hold, this is what you get. If you're going to appeal to the white supremacist, right-wing extremist militias, this is the kind of people that you're dealing with. They're, they're, they're not all some, you know, Kyle Rittenhouse racist kid who's going to shoot somebody after deliberately provoking an incident with somebody else and then claiming it was self-defense. You're going to end up dealing with these hardcore terroristic type people. And that's what they are. That's the end game of a right-wing militia is to overthrow the U.S. government. They say that very specifically. If it goes too far, or violates the Constitution, uh, the vague wording in the Constitution, etc., their right to do so, that, that's what they're planning to do. And it seems very odd that the police, the very people who are charged with enforcing that system, would deliberately ally with people who... Deliberately, very specifically, their purpose is to overthrow it. But they do have that right-wing ideological basis. And most of that is hating black people. But there are also some things in there, along with the rest of the ideology. But maybe this is a wake-up call for the police. Maybe you shouldn't be spending so much time trying to work with militias illegally to try to get them to do your dirty work for you then maybe you should just follow the Constitution and basic human rights to begin with. Thank you for watching. If you like this program, then please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. It's your donations that keep this program running. Also, if you would like, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share in various social media.